For this week's show, we've traveled out to Los Angeles to cover Travis Diener, Steve Novak, and Dwayne Wade, all Marquette alums. ESPN covers all athletes across the nation better than anybody, and we're in their L.A. studios. This is Neil Everett. Marquette Basketball Weekly starts right now. Welcome into this very special edition of Marquette Basketball Weekly. I'm your host, Brad Galley. Now, as we told you off the top, we're in Los Angeles this week, and currently we're at Santa Monica Beach. We're here covering a trio of Marquette alums, Diener, Novak, and Wade, that are all playing in the NBA, and that we're all out here in Los Angeles. We've got exclusive interviews coming up with Travis Diener and Steve Novak, just for you. We're going to get to that and everything else we did in Los Angeles, but first, We've got to catch up with those current Golden Eagles. They won on an impressive 2-1 tear to start the Old Spice Classic. They took on NC State this past Saturday, and on Tuesday, they went against UWM, crosstown rivals. We sent it back to Milwaukee for the highlight call of that game. Robbie Shemp here in MUTV Studio 7. Going into Tuesday's matchup against UWM, Marquette's 36-game win streak over the Panthers ranked as the second longest of its kind in NCAA Division I basketball. Fueled by a fast start to the season and veteran leadership, the Panthers felt that this could be the year to end that streak. Let's take it down to the Bradley Center for the action. Starting things up, here's Coach Buzz Williams and UWM's Rob Jeter talking before the game. Jimmy Butler is going to start things off here, catching the pass from Lazar Hayward, slicing into the lane, going off glass, doing what he does best in the paint for the first two of the contest. Later on, David Kubion slicing through. DJ O is going to wind up with this one. Johnson Odom long range knocks it down. He finished with 15 and supplements his offense with some defense here, picking up the steal, going behind the back to Butler, slams it down. Play of the year candidate early on in the season. Now late in the second half, the Golden Eagles have it. Lazar Hayward long range three, his only three of the game, but that put his squad up 15 and later on puts the exclamation point, dumps it off to Butler in the paint, hoop in the harm. Jimmy finished with 19 and sealed the deal for a 71 to 51 win for the Golden Eagles. Butler flawless from the field as you can see, six of six from the court, finished with 19 points on seven of nine shooting from the free throw line as well. So good to see him getting his free throw woes figured out. Now let's send it back to Brad Galley in Disneyland. It doesn't get much better than this, does it? If you've been to Disneyland in California or even Disney World in Orlando, you can understand why most people call it the happiest place on earth. For head coach Buzz Williams, he's been the head coach at Marquette for two seasons now. It's more than just a place of work for Buzz. It's a happy place for him in Milwaukee. On Wednesday, Coach Williams took time out of his schedule to meet and greet fans at the Marquette Spirit Shop. He's been at the helm of this Marquette basketball team for a season and a half now, and ever since he started as head coach, he's made a constant effort to reach out to the fans. I'd do it every day if they wanted to do it. Uh, we're grateful that as many people care about our program as there is, particularly the students. Uh, and I think our student fan base is just as important as our alumni fan base and our longtime season ticket holders because our students are always going to be the loudest at the games and they're the ones that our players recognize the most. Buzz clearly appreciates each and every person around him at Marquette. The transition he's made from living in Texas to working in Milwaukee has gone swimmingly because of the relationships he's built here. It's also made it easier for him to get to the point to calling Milwaukee home. Yeah, it's getting real close. Uh, I'm going to move in the first home uh, that I would ever call home in the next month, I hope, if everything keeps going the right way. I feel very humbled by that. Uh, it's because this is home for us, and uh, I'll stay here as long as they'll have me to be here. As long as we can keep getting better and growing, I hope that that, that is a long period of time. There's more to the Midwest than just living in the Midwest. The region is known for its blue-collar work ethic, and that fits Buzz perfectly. I asked him how he has made himself get better each day since becoming a Marquette Golden Eagle. I hope that I'm growing every day in my relationship with Christ. Uh, I hope that I'm becoming a, the father and the husband that he intends for me to be. And I hope that I'm an example in all of those areas for our players to see. Uh, obviously, they see me as a coach every day, but I hope 
uh, in the time that we're not on the floor that they see me uh, in a, as a role, role model in those other areas. I'm not always good at it. I hope that I can continue to get better at it. But I want to get better every day, and I want to be surrounded by coaches and players and staff, members that want to get better as well. As the Golden Eagles continue their stretch against in-state rivals, there's only one guy Marquette fans like to see behind the bench, and that's the guy who calls Texas home. Well, for now. From the Hollywood Hills here overlooking the great city of Los Angeles, we now move on to Travis Diener. The offensive-minded guard dazzled crowds at Marquette for four years and was an intricate part of that 2003 Final Four run. One of the nicest guys around now plays in the NBA for the Indiana Pacers and he took time to talk with our Chris Galke at the Staples Center. Here with current Pacers guard and former Marquette alum Travis Diener. Travis, the season probably hasn't gone quite the way you wanted. Toe injury starting off. How's that healing process been going for you? It's been slow, you know, I uh, heard it about the fifth day of practice and then you know, we tried to battle through it, but you know, there's a chip in there, so I had to have surgery on it, which is about two weeks ago. So now it's slowly coming around. Hopefully, in the next few weeks, I'll be back to or close to 100% as possible. So a couple weeks, you think you'll be back in the court? You been practicing at all? Getting no, back slowly? No, not yet. And I think when we get back from this road trip, I'll you know get in the pool and start running. And then you know, probably in two weeks, I'll start practicing again and trying to get back in shape. And then. Uh, you know, hopefully, you know, just keep getting better from there. Now, as the NBA season's going, the college basketball season is also in full swing. Now, as you're out here, do you find time to keep up with Mar Tra Marquette, keep tracking what they're doing? Oh, absolutely. I, uh, you know, with being hurt, uh, you know, I didn't travel on a recent trip, and I got to see, you know, most of the games in Orlando. Uh, you know, I saw a game. Uh, you know, I watch every game on the computer if I'm around. And, uh, you know, they've gotten off to a fast start. Took a tough one today, but. Uh, you know, I think they're heading in the right track and they play hard and that's really all you can ask for. Have you, watching the games, have you seen like certain areas that you've been really impressed with the team so far? Well, in Orlando, I was just impressed with uh, the defensive intensity and how hard they're playing on defense. Obviously, they are uh, small and, you know, haven't developed a bench like they might need to just because of, you know, injuries and, and whatnot. But, you know, I've been just impressed with how hard they've played and, you know, they've shown a lot of intensity and, you know, I've been impressed. You are a Tom Crean guy. He's since moved on to Indiana. Buzz Williams is now the guy. Have you any chance to get with him to see what he's all about? Oh yeah, I've you know talked to Buzz numerous times. Uh, you know, I think the program's heading in the right direction. Uh, you know, with the recruiting classes he keeps getting. You know, I think you know Marquette will be on you know on top of the Big East or, or close to the top for years to come. Back in August, you and your O3 team were inducted the Marquette Hall of Fame. What was it like to get back to some of those guys you might not have seen in a while? Well, you know, I, I get back and I see most of those guys, uh, but never all together. So it was great to be in the, in the same room with those guys, you know, for the first time since, you know, we played together. So, you know, it was great. We had, a, you know, a great time with that event, and we were just honored to be, you know, a part of the Marquette legacy and the Marquette tradition. All right, Travis, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Coming up after the break, we head back out to California. Kobe Bryant's Lakers took on Dwayne Wade's Heat when we were out there. Hear what Kobe and our own D. Wade had to say about Bryant's clutch shot. Plus, we've got my interview with Clippers forward and Marquette great Steve Novak. Hear what he's got to say about Lazar Hayward's chances of making it in the NBA. And our own Todd Warner's got a breakdown of how Hayward's teammate Jimmy Butler was able to go 6-for-6 six six from the field Tuesday. And in this week's Inside Look, we take you behind the scenes where only our cameras captured the magic of the fellas' pregame ritual. Hi, I'm Steve Novak with the Los Angeles Clippers. Hi, this is Travis Diener. Jessica Alvin. When I want my scoop on Marquette basketball. The inside scoop on Marquette basketball. I tune into Marquette basketball weekly. 